Hello everyone! Good afternoon, because it's currently almost 12 o'clock, so good afternoon, because it's about to be afternoon. Um, so today I'm here to tell y'all um, a dream, a story, and yeah, I think that's all I'm here for. I think I'm just going to tell y'all a story and a dream. So, um, I'm here to tell a story. This story, I just thought it was kind of interesting. Y'all might find it a little boring, but I feel like it's kind of interesting. So, um, I have this bracelet. I have this bracelet, which this bracelet has a story. <laughs> Let me explain. So, um, so when I was like beginning to know God and stuff, I wanted something to represent him. Like I wanted something to remind me of what he did for us. I wanted something that would remind me of what he did for us and how he sacrificed himself for our sins. I wanted something that would remind me of what he did. So I thought, so I was like thinking, I was like, maybe just like wearing a bracelet or something would be a good idea because it would help me like remember him. And, you know, and I feel like that was a good idea. So um, I'm looking on Amazon and uh, I'm looking and I see a bracelet and uh, we weren't able to get it yet. Like We couldn't get it yet because of certain reasons. I forget. There was some reason we couldn't get it. I don't exactly remember because it was so long ago. There was some reason we couldn't buy it. So then, the next day, I believe, yeah, I believe it was the very next day, we go to a laundromat, and coincidentally, this is a big coincidence, they were selling bracelets They were very similar to the ones I saw on Amazon, like, super similar, it was, like, creepy. So, I'm like, Mom, can I please buy one? Because they were, like, super similar to the ones I wanted on Amazon. So, I was like, yeah, might as well just buy one. And they were selling them for $2, which is also super cheap, like, just $2. And to make things even weird, I bought the last one they had. The very last one they had, I bought it. So I buy it. And this one, it's not this bracelet. It's a different bracelet. Uh, I didn't get this one till later on. I, if you listen to the story, this will continue. It gets kind of interesting. So I buy that bracelet at the laundromat. And then, and then I go home and I'm wearing it for a few months, probably like three or four months. And out of nowhere, it just, like, breaks on me. Yeah, it accidentally broke on me. I still have the bracelet in my drawer, but you can't wear it anymore because it's broken. I mean, I could probably try to fix it, but I don't know. Because it was already kind of tight on me when I wore it before. So I think even if I was to fix it, it wouldn't fit, I don't think. So after that broke, I was kind of, you know, like, devastated because I'm like, that was the way I remember God and showed him that I loved him. It was like, I mean, I know even without the bracelet, I still love God. And he's still with me. But it was just like a way to just remind me of what he did for us and everything. So, about two or three days after the bracelet broke, my Mimi came home from vacation. Yeah, she came home from vacation. And coincidentally, coincidentally, she had bought me a bracelet. Yeah, she bought me a bracelet as a gift while they were on vacation. And, of course, it was this bracelet. It was this bracelet right here. And um, I was like, that's so crazy because I felt weird because I recently just broke the bracelet that I was using to remember God. And I was kind of devastated. And look, looky here. Literally two or three days after I broke it, my Mimi shows up with a brand new bracelet. So I've been wearing this one to remember God. And then, so I'm wearing this for like, it's probably been like four or five months I was wearing this bracelet. And I'm laying in bed one night. And sometimes before I go to sleep, I'll check and I'll be like, is it on my arm? Just to make sure that I didn't fall off while I was, you know, moving around about the day and everything. So I'm wearing it and I, I'm like, oh, it's on my arm because I can just feel it. So I fall asleep. I wake up the very next morning. The very next morning, this bracelet is nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. And you, sometimes when I'm sleeping, it'll fall off onto my bed. So I look at my bed, nowhere to be found. I look under my bed. Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. So I'm just like, didn't really know what to do because I looked everywhere that I thought it would be pretty much. And I'm just like praying and I'm like, I'm like, God, I know my hair looks kind of crazy. I know I, that's kind of random. I'm just pausing quick because my hair looks kind of crazy. Just ignore my hair. All my videos, my hair looks kind of weird. Usually, anyway. So yeah, let's continue the story. So like I was saying, I'm just like kind of like praying to God, like, please help me find our bracelet. I mean, that was a way I remembered you. I was like, just please help me. And so um, I like, like I said, I looked like everywhere. Like I spent like a day just like, I probably spent like three hours 
just looking for it, and I just can't find it anywhere. And I'm at this point where I'm just like praying to God, like, please help me find my bracelet. So about, I'd say about five days go by, and at this point, I've, like, given up looking for it because I'm like, I'm like, I don't know where it is. It's just gone. So after about five days, my sister decides that we should clean the laundry room because our laundry room was a disaster. <laughs> I'm just trying to, like, make things up. It was, like, full of toys. It was just, like, it was a mess. So you um, mom's been wanting us to clean it. So she's like, yeah, we should clean the laundry room. So we decided to clean it. Like, it was so bad. Like, there wasn't even, like, a way to walk into the laundry room without, like, stepping on stuff or, like, breaking your leg probably. Um, so we're cleaning the laundry room. And then my sister, we have this box of movies. And there's a shelf right above it. There's a shelf right above it. She looks up at the shelf, and my bracelet is hanging on the shelf. Yeah, it was hanging on the corner of the shelf. And I'm like, so confused. I have almost zero idea how my bracelet got on that shelf. I have almost zero idea. Almost zero, zero idea how my bracelet got on that shelf. There's almost no reason that it should have been on that shelf. Literally, she said that she found it just hanging on the shelf. I'm like, what? Like, I don't know, because I said I was praying that I would find it. So I'm like, maybe God helped me find it. Like, there's almost no reason my bracelet should have been on that shelf. Like, that was just crazy. So, yeah, that was the whole story. I just thought that was kind of interesting, and I feel like God helped me find it. I felt like God helped me get the bracelet, and then he helped me find it, of course. I just thought that was very interesting. So, now I do have a dream I want to tell y'all. I just thought I'd tell that story first because I feel like it's interesting. I don't know. I feel like some of y'all might find it a little boring, but I feel like it's interesting and it shows that God was helping me. Um, but here's a dream. So the person in this dream, I would rather not mention his name. So we're just going to call him. We can just call him for the purpose of the video. We just call him. Oh, I'm trying to think of a name. <laughs> What's a good name? I know. We can just call him Bob for the rest of the thing. Usually... When I have a dream and I don't want to mention the person's name, I usually just call him Bob. So we're just going to call him Bob. So I had a dream. So if you don't know this, I have never been to this place. And what makes it so weird, usually when I have a dream and it's a place i never been to, a place i never seen in my life, usually it's super detailed in my dream. And then, like, I go and Google it and it actually looks like that. I'm like, how do my brain know that it actually looks like that? Like, I don't know. Like, literally, I'll see things I've never seen before in my dreams and then go and, like, look it up and they actually look like that. And I'm like, there's no way. Like, no way, you know? So, um, yeah, let's continue the dream. So, I had a dream that I was in Washington and we were visiting a museum dedicated to the Bible. So, if you don't know, in Washington, there actually is a museum dedicated to the Bible. And I knew this because I was on YouTube and... Someone was making a video where they um, were talking about it, and they said it was in Washington. So a couple days after I saw that video, I had this dream. So in this dream, um, you walked into the museum, and there was, like, this area, and it was, like, dedicated to Noah, like, Noah and the flood. And what was cool is that in this room, you, it was, like, a replica. It was supposed to, like, you, it was supposed to like, make it like you were on the boat during the during the time he was. And so I'm in this room, and um, the way they had it, there was like, I'm trying to explain it the best I could. They had it, there was like water in this room. It was like a lot, like it was enough water to go maybe to your ankle. Like it wasn't a lot at all. And then they had these clouds on top of the ceiling, and these clouds were supposed to replica, they are supposed to replicate the thunder sounds and stuff during when they were on the boat, which is still really cool. And then while you were in this room, what you did, you could stand in this room and then you were supposed to like feel the water and hear the thunder. And then it also told the story of Noah and how he built the ark and everything, which is really cool. And in this dream, I was in this room. And if you don't know me, I have epilepsy and I have a pretty, it's not bad, I would say, but I'm kind of afraid of loud sounds, which I've heard people that epilepsy usually are. So in my dream, the thunder I was hearing was really loud, and it bothered me so bad in my dream. 
that to the point where I was huddled into the corner of the room and I did not want to leave. That's how bad the noise was bothering me in my dream. So in my dream, we're just going to call him Bob, like I said, because I don't want to mention his name. So Bob comes and he he's telling me, he's like, hey, I can get you out of this room. He's like, hey, I can get you out of this room. Just grab my hand. And I remember in my dream, I didn't want to grab his hand. And it wasn't because I was scared. I don't think it wasn't enough. It was some reason it was like my brain was telling me he's unclean. And I'm like, why is he unclean? In my dream, it was like he had his hand reaching out. But it's like he couldn't just grab my hand. It was like I had to grab it. And I was like, in my dream, I was like, I don't want to grab your hand because you're unclean. That's not what I said. In my dream, I said, I don't want to grab your hand because you're evil. But I was thinking when I woke up, I was like, I knew that I was feeling that like he was unclean. He was evil. And if I was to grab his hand, it was almost like I was accepting that evil, if that makes any sense. So in my dream, I said, this is why I like, told him, even though I was in this room with all this loud noise that I hated, I said, I was like, I don't want to grab your hand because you're evil. And then this person, like I said, recording ball, walks out, walks out. And he says, I'm going to go get our mom. I'm going to go get mom because she's not evil. That's literally what, what he said in my dream. I'm going to go get mom because she's not evil. I'm like, what? What? Yeah, in the dream, I didn't want to touch him because something was like telling me, they're like, he's unclean, he's evil. And he, it was like, if I touched him, I would have got that on me. It was crazy. And the person, he literally said, because I was scared, I went out of that room, and he said, I'm going to go get mom because she's not evil. What? I thought that was very interesting. And I had had dreams with this person before. And I feel like that was just God telling me to pray for him, which, of course, I plan to pray for him. You can pray for him, too. Um, but, yeah, that was a dream I had. And that story I had, I thought that was pretty cool. And, yeah, I guess that's everything for now. And thanks for watching. And just like I said, ignore my hair. My hair is always like a mess. Like no matter how much I brush my hair, this or that, it's just like a mess. I have very few videos where my hair I think looks normal. Um, but I guess uh, bye for now. Thanks for watching.